I think it has been 20 years since the last time I played this little game right here called Heart of Darkness. Until now. Very recently I got this game for my PS1 collection, I beat it during the last weekend and uh, today I'm going to review it for you guys. And greetings YouTube gamers, welcome to another episode of Retro Raider, my name is Johnny Retro and welcome to the channel. Before we jump into the review guys, let me remind you that there's a giveaway going on here on the Retro Raider channel where I'm offering a copy of the Final Fantasy movie. I will leave a link in the description box below with all of the information you guys need to participate on the giveaway. And uh, yeah, let's go on with today's video, today is a review of Heart of Darkness for the PS1, so let's check it out right after this. Okay, so Heart of Darkness, I mean, where to start? I know that a lot of you are into this game, without a doubt, a cult classic. And I mentioned this in a previous video, on my last pickups video. I did play this game back in the day, although I only played the demo for the PC. And now, 20 years later, I finally have a complete copy for my PS1 collection. I beat the game, and let me tell you this, guys. It truly is a cult classic, and um... I do understand it why. So Hearts of Darkness was developed by Amazing Studio and released in 1998 for the PS1 and PC. There was also a Game Boy Advance port in the works, but that got cancelled in 2001. Heart of Darkness is kind of a spiritual successor to Another World, a game that was released in 1991 for the Mega Drive and Sega Genesis. Now you guys probably remember Another World and uh, the guy behind that game was also the creator of Heart of Darkness. That's why it is kind of a spiritual successor and although Another World was released in 1991, this game took 7 years to be released. And honestly, it was totally worth it. So what is Heart of Darkness all about? Heart of Darkness is a cinematic puzzle platformer game that uses pre-rendered graphics and real-time cutscenes. You play as Andy, a bright, geeky kid that hates his teacher and has afraid of the dark. One day at the park, his dog Whiskey gets kidnapped by dark creatures during a sun eclipse. Therefore, Andy will embark on an adventure on his homemade ship to save his dog Whiskey. So yeah, the background story is kind of cheesy, but let me tell you this guys, the story, it is not the reason why you want to play this game. It's all about the mechanics, it's all about the gameplay, it's all about the fun, and uh, this is indeed a very fun game to play. The gameplay style of Heart of Darkness reminds me a little bit of Pitfall, the Mayan Adventure, and the original Prince of Persia, honestly. I'm not saying that this is a clone by any means, and I mean, if it was, those are great games, but uh... It does remind me a little bit in the gameplay and the whole presentation of the game. The controls are tight, super responsive, although there's an intentional delay so you guys can build up speed for jumping and compensate for stopping. You guys can really, really feel the momentum in this game. So all of these mechanics in the movements, the way you run, the way you jump, that's why it reminds me a little bit of the classic Prince of Persia. The whole gameplay is very linear. You jump, you run, you crawl, you solve puzzles, you get through tricky obstacles and you fight hordes of enemies. And speaking about combat, well, is there any fighting in Heart of Darkness? You bet there is. For a weapon, you start the game with a plasma cannon, which you will lose after a couple of minutes into the game, so it can be replaced for magic energy, your main offensive power in Heart of Darkness. So what do we have here so far? I mean, we have a bunch of jumps, we have puzzles, we have running, we have hordes of enemies, and it is a fun game, but it is no walk in the park. This game, guys, it is not frustrating, but uh, it is not for the average gamer. I mean, this game is hard. It is definitely not a walk in the park, and I mean, it's all about trial and error, memorizing patterns, and uh, you're going to die a lot. Believe me, you are going to die a lot. And uh, there are a couple of cheap deaths within the game, but uh, I think that's part of the charm, because this game doesn't take itself too seriously. Now, the good news is that you can save the game whenever you want. And I want to go back and talk about the difficulty a little bit more because although it is a hard game, it is totally worth it. Because the game constantly gives you a sense of reward and accomplishment each time you solve a puzzle or go through a difficult obstacle. So like I said, it is totally worth it and uh, I don't think that you guys are going to rage quit or break any controllers. You also have a couple of swimming sections in the game, and uh, usually swimming sections in 2D games are a reason for concern, but uh, swimming in Heart of Darkness, it's fairly easy. You do have a couple of pushbacks, you know, swimming against the current, but uh, it's part of the game. Now, I want to talk about the graphics because, although we're talking about a retro game, the graphics are kind of important, 
in this type of game, in the type of game that Heart of Darkness fits into. This game uses pre-rendered graphics, which usually don't age that well compared to pixel art graphics. And usually, pre-rendered graphics in retro video games means slower response time and long loading times. Although this is not the case in Heart of Darkness. And I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, I'm not a big fan of pre-rendered graphics, but Heart of Darkness, it aged pretty damn well. And let's not forget that we were in 1998, and uh... That was a turning point in gaming. 3D was still fresh, we didn't know at the time that it was going to be the next big thing in gaming. And for a 2D side-scrolling game, this was very impressive back in the day. So I have to say that when it comes to the graphics, Heart of Darkness truly is a product of its time. And that leads me to the cutscenes, because let me tell you guys, back in the day, once again, cutscenes were a big thing. And this game is filled with amazing cinematics. And I've told this story before in a previous video, the opening cinematic for Heart of Darkness is one of my best gaming memories of all time. Like I said, I played this on a demo on the PC and uh, it totally blew my mind away. You know, the graphics, the animations, the voice acting, I mean, that was kind of brand new to me. It almost felt like, you know, a life cartoon, if you will. And there's also a very cool gimmick in this game, and uh, I mean, this is so 90s, I bet that a lot of you remember this. I hope that you guys can see right here, free 3D glasses included. Now, I'm not going to give you guys any spoilers, but uh, there's a part within the game where <laughs> you need to use these. And that's all I'm going to say about that, because I really don't want to spoil anybody's fun. And by the way, guys, if you manage to score a copy like this one with the 3D glasses, keep it because these are getting harder and harder to find. And I also want to say this, guys, this game takes two discs on the PS1, but uh, the game itself is not that long. And like I said on this review, it is a hard game, it is all about trial and error, it's all about repeating sections, but uh, it is not a very long game. And let's not forget about the cutscenes, because there's a lot of them. I would say that this game has the perfect duration, I think that it is the sweet spot when it comes to a side-scrolling platformer retro video game. So what are you looking for is a morning or an afternoon filled with fun. And this was the video guys, this was my review of Heart of Darkness on the PS1. Finally, I beat the game and uh, it truly is a wonderful game. Now I understand why this game is a cult classic, now I understand why a lot of people are into Heart of Darkness. And let me know about you guys, let me know on the comment section below if you guys played Heart of Darkness. And also let me know if you have a complete copy with the 3D glasses in your collection. So let me know on the comment section below. Once again, don't forget to participate on the giveaway so you guys can win a copy of the Final Fantasy movie, link of the giveaway video in the description box below. And uh, yeah, this was the video. If you want to support the show, feel free to check out the Retro Raiders Patreon page. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to put a like on this video, please subscribe to the channel and take care of yourselves, take care of the gaming community and game a lot.